Doing practice questions is not enough. Anki is not enough. And I know they both feel productive. I've done them both. But trust me, if you are not reviewing with intention, then you're not actually improving. In fact, I would go as far as to say a lazy review is a great preview of how bad you're gonna score in the test. You see what I did there? Now most students plateau in the MCAT, and it's not because they're not trying, but it's because their review of their practice questions is so passive. They might go through UWorld, AMC, all these other third-party full-length exams, and just like hope that the learning sticks. And I hope this isn't you, but if this is resonating with you, let me tell you three questions that you can ask for every single question that you encounter so that you can make sure you're getting the most out of your reviews. You have to stop and ask, number one, what exactly did I miss? And I, you wanna drill in and be specific here. You know, I always teach about how whenever you're learning a science, you need to learn the story, which is like the concept and how it fits into all these different sciences. So if you're studying about photons and things of the nature, you need to understand the equation E is equal to HF, understand why frequency is modulating energy. You also need to understand how that could play into optics and light and physics and things of that nature. That's the story, but that you also have to know the details. So for example, memorizing what Planck's constant is, that's just a number. There's no way to understand that, right? That's just a detail. So when you're asking yourself, what exactly did I miss? Figure out, did I miss the story, the overall concept? Like I was completely lost in the sauce. I had no clue what we were talking about. Or is this just like one minute detail and I had narrowed it down to they're asking for the value of Planck's constant or the charge of glycine and I just blanked on it. I just didn't know it. The next thing you need to ask yourself is why was the answer that I picked wrong? Or if you got it right, why were the other answer choices wrong? This is a really good way to ensure that you know the topics and the concepts and that you can pick out the nuances in the language between the two answer choices and how WMC phrases things because you'll notice that a lot of the times there are two questions on the MCAT that are both technically right but one is best and whether or not you're scoring a 515 or 520 or whatever you're gonna have to be able to figure out which one's best and so it's important that you pay attention to what they view as best and I'll give you a little hint, okay? It's usually the one that is just undeniably true. It's the answer choice that when you read it, you're like, oh, that's a true statement. It's not the one that you feel like you have to stretch for and you have to say, oh, well, are they tricking me? If you have those two options, you have one that you feel like, are they kind of trying to trick me? And you have another one that you're like, that's for sure true. You go with the one that's for sure true every time. The third thing you need to ask yourself is how do I never fall for this trap again? Now, this is kind of tough, but if it's a concept, then you have to learn the concept in its entirety, right? You need to be able to apply it to different scenarios. And that means that you have learned the concept. If you can do that successfully and you can explain it in very few words, that means you got the concept. If it's a detail, just make a flashcard for it, right? And just make sure that you don't ever forget the charge of glutamate again. But if it's something in the wording, then it's a little bit more specific, right? Like if you got kind of lost in how they were asking the question, you didn't even know what they were asking for, which happens a lot, then you need to ask yourself why. Like number one, why was I not ready for that question? When I read through the passages, if you've seen Maggie, the other tutor on this channel, and myself break down passages, we usually kind of guess at what they're gonna ask about. So why did you not recognize it too? So that's the first one. What am I missing in the passage? Second one is, am I simplifying the question well enough? Like, did I boil it down to what were they actually looking for? And if you did all of that, then you need to figure out what within the question of the answer choices kind of tripped me up. What trap did they use? Was it a specific language or is it that I just truly don't know the sciences and I have to go back to steps one and two, right, where you're patching those sciences. So what does perfect practice look like? Perfect practice is not about repetition, it's about precision. I know it's weird because I'm like the, you gotta get good reps in guy. And I'll tell you what it actually looks like. But first, my name is John. For those of you that don't know me, I am a fourth year medical student. I just matched into plastic surgery, so I'll have to change that intro pretty soon. Before I started medical school, I had struggled, took the MCAT four times, finally got in, took everything that I learned to get a 90th percentile score and started this YouTube channel and the associated business with my co-MCAT tutor on the channel, Maggie. She's a third year medical student. She's also my little sister. 
we make these videos. We hope that all you need to study for the MCAT is our free stuff. If it's not, then we hope that you'll look to us for some of the more extensive paid resources to make sure that you only have to take the test one more time. So this is what perfect practice looks like. When you're reviewing a passage, you're going to read the question. You're going to pause before you look at the right answer. You know, if you, if you know you missed this one, read it and be like, okay, what, what are they looking for? You know, because you've got to be able to put yourself in the mindset of how was I thinking when I encountered this question the first time? It's so easy to read a question and look at which one is check marked to green and be like, how did I miss that? And there's usually a reason, right? You weren't just like daydreaming. There's a reason. So you got to figure out what mindset you were in. You can only do that by pausing before you immediately, you know, your eyes dart to the right answer, then they dart to the solutions text for that one little fact that you wanted to pull from it, and then you go to the next question. You're also going to find the trap. What did trick you up? What put a spin move on you, right? Because it's, is it the content? or is it the structure and logic that fooled you? If you can identify that, then you can improve upon it. But I want you to think about professional athletes. Like they spend as much, if not more time, watching film than they do practicing the sport that they play. That should tell you that review is important because these people are making millions of dollars and whether or not they can make more millions of dollars depends on how good they are at their sport. And they say it is more important for them to watch their previous game and prepare in that fashion than it is for you to go work on your free throws or your, your jump shot or something like that. And as you get all of this information, you know, you figure out why you got tricked, you figure out what content you needed, you figure out where the traps are, all those things. You've got to make a concerted effort to fix your process, not just your knowledge. So why does this work? I'll give you three reasons it works. Number one is it builds pattern recognition. I'm telling you, the MCAT is predictable if you think like a test writer. Number two, it rewires bad habits. You know, I missing a question is a good thing to me whenever you're prepping because it highlights a deficiency that you have that you don't want to have when you go take the real test, right? So every time that you make too far of an assumption or you just have a sloppy guess or something like that, that's a retraining opportunity. You need to lean into that. And number three, this intentional effort, it respects your time. Because this passive review, if you're not locked in, you're gonna get bored and you're gonna play on your phone. And that makes what should be a three hour task an eight hour task. And the truth is you don't need all that time studying. You don't need 12 hours a day you just need six hours done right. Now to help you all out with this, we built the AAMC Passage Breakdowns Strategies course. We take all the AAMC exams, FLEs one through four, and we walk through every passage, every question, every tip, every trick, every trap, every shortcut that we know, why the wrong answers are tempting, and what you should have done instead. So you don't have to worry if your review skills are good or bad, you can lean on ours. It's kind of like having a 90th and a 100th percentile MCAT score or review the test with you. So if your test is close, you're taking AAMC exams and you're grinding and you're freaking out because you're going to have to drive to Maine to take a test. That's the only time that the rescheduled date will work or something like that because you're just not getting results. This is probably the missing piece. It'll be the first link in the description and I want to encourage you, start training like a test writer and you will absolutely excel as a test taker. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.